This is video two of section two. To continue the twos theme, there are two ways to automate templates in the A to J document assembly tool or the A to J DAT. This video will cover automating an A to J PDF template. All template creation takes place within the templates tab. If your interview has templates in it, here's where you'll see all of them. By default, only the active templates show but you can also toggle to your deleted templates and restore them if you need to. When you're ready to create a template, you'll first need to decide if you wanna create a text template or a PDF template. Let me give you some pros and cons to help you weigh the options. Text templates are all about authoring freedom and open space. They are blank slates that you build upon to create an ultimate document. You can add whatever combination of text, variables, and logic to them and your user can provide answers of varying lengths. But with that freedom comes some problems. If you're trying to replicate a specific form or look of another document, they can be hard to format as an exact replica. The text editor has formatting options, which you'll learn about in the next video in this section, but it's not the same as a Word document. So it can cause issues with the final document not looking like a copy of whatever document you were trying to replicate. Text templates are best used when you don't already have a court form PDF on hand. Think of a letter to a landlord demanding repairs or a simple motion, something without strict formatting. You can also use it when the user's answer is likely going to be long, but you don't know exactly how long. Text templates give you the flexibility to allow your end user to answer as completely as they need without having to limit characters. The template will expand to add pages as the user needs it. If text templates are all about blank slates and freedom, PDF templates are all about order, replication, and restrictions. They really are a court form dupe or duplication because you take the existing court form PDF and automate on top of it. The assembled document then looks exactly like the court expects it to, just with the user's answers filled in on the blank lines. All of the text is already there, formatted exactly, and the blank lines become the starting place for your variable fields. A con with this is that you are limited to what text is already in that PDF and how much space is provided on those blank lines. One workaround if you need to give your user additional space for their answers is to allow A to J author to add an addendum if needed. We'll talk more about how to do that in a few minutes. I find automating a PDF template much more straightforward than a text template, especially if you are a new author. So let's talk about how you actually automate a PDF template. The first step is to get your underlying PDF ready. You need a PDF that is flattened, that is without fillable fields. If the form already has fillable fields, those will override or overlay the A to J DAT fields and your assembled document will be blank. But fear not, flattening a PDF is super easy. You can either do it in Adobe Pro if you have it, or you can download the PDF and open it locally. Then you click the print icon or select print from the menu. You should have a print destination of Microsoft Print to PDF. Select that and it will flatten your PDF and download a local copy. Use that version then as the base layer for your PDF template. If these steps don't work for you or you have a different computer setup, just Google how to flatten a PDF. There are videos and instructions out there for you. Once you have your PDF ready, you're going to want to click Create PDF Template from the Templates tab. The DAT PDF Template tool will then open. Let's do a quick tour through the PDF Template tool to help you familiarize yourself with the automating tools you'll be using. Starting off at the top, you have the Template Title field. This is what you're calling this template. This name will only be seen within the authoring suite. End users won't see this template's name. However, the naming of interviews and templates is another great place to establish a naming convention, so it's clear in a list what the template or interview is about. Under that are the Test Assemble and Save buttons. You can test assemble, that is, practice combining an answer file with a template to see what it'll look like for your end user, from either inside individual templates or from the Templates tab. Test assembling within a template will only produce that template. Test assembling it within the larger template tab will assemble all templates that meet that answer file's parameters. Under those two buttons, you'll see the last saved at time and its date with a circle, either a green circle or a red circle. This gives you confirmation that autosave or your manual save of the template worked. 
Under that are the document options. First off the bat is the ability to replace the base PDF layer. Essentially, a PDF template is a picture of a document with variable fields overlaid on it. If the underlying court form changes, you don't have to throw out your automated template and start over. You can keep the majority of the work and instead replace the base layer picture, i.e. the PDF, and move any fields around that may no longer fit that new base layer. This is a huge author help because it means your template and ultimately your entire A to J guided interview can have longevity regardless of court form formatting changes. The next two controls down relate to the font that will display within the fields when the document assembles. Under those are the addendum configuration controls. This will set the margins and page size of the addendum if needed by overflow and allowed by you as an author. Finally, you have the ability to set a conditional logic statement on this template. This will set a condition by which this individual template is assembled based on the user's answers. For example, this template will only assemble if the variable has children TF is true. Perhaps this template relates to child support within a larger divorce petition interview. If the user doesn't have any children with the respondent, then there is no need to generate a child support proposed order here. You can set the condition to evaluate if a variable is true, is false, is equal, does not equal, is greater than, or is less than some set value or another variable. Most commonly, you will probably set the condition to test if a variable is true or false, but the other options are available if you need them. Let's circle back to that flattened PDF and actually turn a PDF into a template. Turning a PDF into a template can be accomplished in as little as two clicks. In this GIF, I click the blue button, Upload PDF, and A to J Author opens my local file explorer. Then I double click on the PDF I want to use and it loads it into the template editor and it is a template, albeit one without any fields yet. It's really that easy. Full disclosure though, I did have this PDF already teed up in my local file explorer's memory because I'd used it earlier in prepping this GIF. But if you didn't have it prepped, you just have to navigate to where you'd saved that flattened PDF and then double click on it to turn it into a template. So we've turned our PDF into a template but to really have any impact, we need to add fields to it and then variables to those fields to display the user's answers. This is going to replicate the work you did while scoping the project where you highlighted all the blanks on the PDF. We talked about this in video six of section one. So if you don't remember what I'm talking about, go back and rewatch that video. The idea now is to put a field on every blank line. Then you're going to add a variable to each of those fields. You can either create all the fields and then go back and add all the variables, or you can go one by one, adding a field, then adding a variable to it, or you can do a mixture of both. The GIF playing on the screen now is showing me making a field. You just double click on the blank line where you want to add a field and A to J author evaluates the length of the line and the height of the surrounding text to guesstimate the size of the field you want. It gets it right a lot of the time, but you can always resize the field to fit the blank if you want by dragging the corners around. You can see that too in the GIF here. Now you need to add variables to those fields. Fields that are yellow don't have variables in them yet and say unassigned variable field. Fields that are blue have a variable in them and will say the name of the variable assigned to it. To add a variable, right click into a yellow unassigned variable field. You can see in the GIF in the top left hand corner that when I right click, the variable design editor appears. That is what is called out in the screenshot in the lower right hand side. Each variable type has slightly different options available for it in the variable design editor. I'll walk you through each type and discuss the differences. But first, let's talk about what is universal to all variable types. Every variable has a space for its name, remember that naming convention, a drop down list of type options, a check if multiple values checkbox, and a comment field. The type options are text, true, false, number, date, and multiple choice. You'll only check the check if multiple values box if you want this variable to hold multiple values because it is being used in a repeat loop. Repeat loops will be covered in detail in section three of this training course, but repeat loop variables hold multiple values in an array rather than overriding the stored value. If you don't check this box, A to J author will overwrite the variable's value with the next value input rather than put that subsequent value into the array. Finally, all variable types have the ability to store an author comment with it. This comment can only be seen from the authoring interface so end users won't see it. 
Now the different options for the different variable types. Starting with the top left, hot pink circled one, text variable type. Text variables have the ability to be grouped across multiple fields. You'll use this when you have multiple lines that you want the user's data to go over. For example, your form might have a question that asks why the end user is completing this form. It has four blank lines to hold the user's answer, expecting about a paragraph of information. You'll want the answer to flow from line to line as each field runs out of space. So you group those fields together and they share a single variable. That single variable is not set to repeating because you don't want to store multiple values, but rather have a single value slash user's answer spread across multiple lines on the final document. The first step is to add the same variable to all the fields. In this example, I have four lines, so I made four fields. Then for each field, I right clicked into it and added the variable purpose of form TE. I only had to create the variable the first time. After that, when I started typing P-U-R, A to J author pulled up purpose of form TE and I just selected it. That's an important authoring tip because technically you have the full power of the variable design editor each time you right click and open it inside of a field. So if you accidentally spell the variable name wrong the second through fourth times you're trying to add it to a field, you're actually creating a brand new, slightly differently named variable, which isn't what you want to happen. So right click into the field, add the same variable to each field, and then move on to the next step. The next step is the actual grouping. To group these four lines together and tell A to J author to run the user's answer from one line to the next within this set boundary, you click on the first field, left click this time, then you hold down the control key or the command key on a Mac and click all the fields you want to group together. Once you have all the fields selected, four fields in this GIF example showing on the screen, you right click into any of them. The variable design editor will pop up again and you select group selected text boxes. This makes them a unit within the A to J DAT and changes you make to one flow through all of the rest. If you make a mistake and accidentally group fields you didn't intend to, you can ungroup them by removing the check mark in any of the variable design editors for that variable group. Another option available with text variable types is the text overflow decisions. This relates to scenarios where the characters and the user's answer exceed the space in the field. By default, A to J author will ignore the text overflow and cut off the user's answer after it exceeds the available field space. Instead, you can choose to append only the overflow to an addendum, or you can choose to append all of the text to an addendum and leave that space in the field blank. If you want an addendum, make sure to add an addendum label in the appropriate field so that it will make sense when printed in the final assembled document that this addendum text goes with, for example, one dash purpose of form, or why are you filling this form out? However you want this overflow information labeled. The next variable type in the dropdown list is true false, shown here with the yellow surround. The options with this variable allow you to pick different checkmark styles based on your form's needs. So you can have A to J author mark a check, an X, a circled X, a circled check, a filled in circle, a box around an X, a boxed check, or a filled in box. You can also tell A to J author to check the box if the variable is false rather than just relying on a true value. For example, you ask the user if they are married. Yes sets the variable married TF to true. No sets married TF to false. On your form, you have two checkboxes, one next to the word married and one next to the word unmarried. So both of those fields would contain the married TF variable, and for the one next to the unmarried option on the form, you'd check this, if the variable is false, draw a checkmark option in that field's variable design editor. The third and fourth options for variable types are number and date. Number is shown here with the blue surround. I don't have date on here because the options are exactly the same for date variables. You only have the default variable options of name, type, repeating, and comment for these two variable types. Finally, we have multiple choice, shown here with the green surround in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Multiple choice variables allow you to pass the actual value of the multiple choice variable or a check mark. For example, you ask the user what their favorite color is. The options are pink, green, blue, and yellow. Two scenarios for the form then. Scenario one, you have a form with a blank line next to the question, what is your favorite color? You select pass multiple choice value. 
and whatever word they selected from your list inside the interview will display on that form. Scenario two, you have a series of four checkboxes on the form, one next to each color option. For the one next to the word pink on the form, you'd select draw a check mark if the variable matches, and then add the word pink in the field that says multiple choice value. That field only becomes editable once you click the draw a check mark option. Make sure your case, spelling, and spacing are exactly the same as what you used in the interview drafting for this option because A to J author will only draw the check mark if it's an exact match. Under the multiple choice value field, but not shown in this screenshot, is the same check mark style options that are available in the true false variable type. Check, X, circled X, circle check, filled in circle, boxed X, boxed check, or filled in box. Selecting a variable type may seem a bit daunting at first, but you'll quickly get the hang of deciding which variable types will best suit your purposes. The DAT PDF template tool has a couple keyboard shortcuts to make your life easier. The keyboard shortcuts all work without this cheat sheet open, but if you're like me, you never remember what they are. So you can open the keyboard shortcuts cheat sheet by hitting control plus the forward slash or command plus the forward slash on a Mac. Then all of those minor editing changes that you wanna to do to the fields to get them to line up exactly or to duplicate them can be done more easily. The included keyboard shortcuts allow you the ability to duplicate, delete, and nudge variable fields. The PDF DAT supports multiple page PDFs as well as single pages. Author tip, if you ever replace the base PDF with one that has a different page length than what's currently there, A to J author will warn you so that you don't accidentally delete your automation work on page seven of a template by replacing it with a PDF that only has six. Author tip number two, you wanna see all the pages in your PDF template, you can scroll down, but you can also click the toggle thumbnail in the upper right-hand corner that looks like two sheets of stacked paper. That toggles open the display of all the pages in your PDF. You can see it at the end of the GIF that's playing on the screen right here. The final stop on our PDF templates tour is a review of the test assembly process. When creating a j guided interviews, you need to be test assembling many times. It's so important that I have a whole part of section four devoted to it. On PDF templates, the test assemble button is right under the name of the template, next to the save button. When you click it, your local file explorer opens up and you navigate to the saved answer file you want to test your template against. You'll learn how to generate that in the testing section of this training course. Once you select that answer file, the a to j dat will assemble your document. Then you open the assembled PDF, if it doesn't open automatically, and make sure all the variables have filled in with the values and that they're lined up on the lines like you want them to be. If not, go back into your template and do some adjustments or debugging, then test assemble again until it looks like you expect it to look. Now that you know how to automate a PDF template, go and try it out. There's a training exercise for PDF templates found on the course landing page. Up next, we'll discuss automating with the text template tool.